Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new then welcome. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has recently subscribed. It really means a lot and I hope you're enjoying the regular videos. I'm uploading music videos every single Tuesday and bonus videos sometimes on a Friday. But today's video is going to be a little bit of a different one because I was kind of at a loss for what to do this week and then I had someone comment on one of my older videos that they wanted a tutorial on how I played it and I've actually had quite a few people ask how to play this song and so I thought I would give you a little tutorial. Now just a disclaimer, I don't play the song exactly the same as the original, this is kind of a version that I made for myself to simplify it, especially when I covered it I wasn't very good on the guitar, so I wanted to come up with something that had simple chords that I could play and the structure wasn't too difficult. So I'm going to be showing you how to play the song Never Think by Robert Pattinson from the Twilight movies and it's such a beautiful song but it's not the easiest to find how to play it online so hopefully this is helpful to you if you want to learn how to play this really beautiful song. Let's get into it. So like I said I'm not really used to filming tutorial videos and I've just rejigged the setup so the mic's not in the way and you can actually see what I'm doing with my chord hand so the sound might be a little bit different but I'll do a full playthrough at the end so you can see how everything looks in context but I kind of want you to be able to see my hands while I'm playing so you can see the chords properly. So this song kind of cycles around the same few chords so first of all I'll show you all the chords that I'm using in the song and then I'll show you what order I play them in. So my guitar is in standard tuning and I've got a capo on the second fret. I believe that's the key of the original song. All these chords are in relation to the capo. So the first chord is a regular C chord which is first finger on the second string on the first fret, the second finger on the fourth string on the second fret and then the third finger on the fifth string of the third fret. Uh, I'm not used to explaining chords. So during the song you'll notice that I will do a hammer on in this chord so where I will lift my second finger and play the fourth string open in the chord and then flick my finger back onto the second fret of the fourth string so you get this kind of sound. But you're playing the whole chord at the same time. So a lot of the time to help me, um, because I play quite open with my strumming, I will sort of sit my thumb on top of the low E string just to make sure that I don't play the low E string, um, otherwise it sounds a little bit muddy and it's not the right sound. So like I said, the first chord is a C with a hammer on. Then the next chord that I play is an E minor 7, so if you're familiar with an E minor. Um, you, you're just taking one of your fingers off so you're just playing the fifth string on the second fret and normally I do this with my middle finger or my second finger and for this you do want to play all the strings but what I'll often do is I will add my first finger in and I will play the second string on the first fret adds a little bit more dissonance and sounds pretty <laughs> and it makes sense when we go on to the next chord which is an A minor 7 so it's just like a normal A minor but you take off the third finger so you are gonna have your first finger on the second string on the first fret and then your second finger on the fourth string on the second fret yeah that's right <laughs> and Again, the same thing, you can sort of hit your thumb on the low E string just to mute it um, because you only want to play it from the fifth string because that's the A in the bass. So, so far we've got C, then a variation of an E minor 7, and then A minor 7. Then the next chord is a variation of an F, so I think you can just play a normal F here, but it doesn't fit as nicely as this variation does because all of the chords that I'm using are quite open. So in order to play this chord, you're going to have, again, your first finger on the second string on the first fret, then I use my thumb to bar on the low E string on the first fret, which is the F 
the bass. And then I'll use my third finger uh, on the fifth string on the third fret. And so it kind of looks like you're playing a C, but you add the thumb and you take the middle finger off. So some of the strings are going to be muted, so like the fourth string underneath your middle finger is going to be muted, um, and that's fine. Yeah, you definitely could play a normal F chord, so if you can't get your thumb over the top, just play a normal F bar chord. I think it's important to get the low bass in there though, otherwise it sounds a little bit too high if you play an F like this. So just to go over, this is the F chord that I'm talking about. Normally, I think, remembering back to covering it, I don't play the high E string. Um, and that kind of gets muted anyway because your fingers are kind of covering it. So, yeah, you don't really hear the high E string because my finger is muting it. And then what I believe is the last chord is a G. Um, so normally when I play a G major chord, I will play it like this. So I will have my first finger on the fifth string on the second fret. It's really hard to actually break down chords, oh my gosh. Uh, second finger on the sixth string on the third fret, and then my other two fingers down the bottom. So my third finger on the second string on the third fret, and then my fourth finger on the first string on the third fret, like this. However, in this song, um, I tried to make the transitions as easy as possible. So a lot of the time in this song, I will play it like this. So I'll have my second finger on the fifth string on the second fret, third finger on the sixth string on the third fret, and then my pinky, so my fourth finger on the first string on the third fret. It's a little bit more open, but then it allows you to, if you want to, add in the sus um, with your I think it's sus4. So with your first finger, you can add it onto the second string on the first fret. Yeah, second string on the first fret. If you want to. If you're a more experienced guitarist, there's a lot of room for hammer-ons and adding little licks and things here and there because the song is so repetitive. Uh, so definitely experiment with the chords and make it your own. So now we have to put all of those chords into the song. So I'm just going to play the chords that I showed you one more time. So we have a C, and an E minor 7, an A minor 7, F, and then a G. Hopefully I explain those chords easy enough and hopefully as I go along with the video you'll actually see how I put them in context. Now to talk about strumming pattern. A lot of the time when I'm covering videos, I'm not thinking about what beats I'm strumming. I just kind of listen to the song and then play what feels comfortable. And I don't know if that's how other people learn covers or if other people play songs like that, but I'm not really thinking about the beats as such. And I think that's just because I'm not as much of a technical player. I more play by feel. Um, so I'm gonna try and decipher to you the strumming pattern that I play. But honestly, it's the same thing as I said before, you can really make it your own. So in my head, I'm thinking about the strumming pattern in sort of a two bar phrase. And in the first bar, I'm accenting the first beat and the fourth beat. And then in the second bar, I'm accenting the third beat. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll mute the strings and I'll play the strumming pattern that I'm playing just so you can sort of get a feel for the beat. So if I count over the top, hopefully it'll make more sense. This is what it sounds like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And in context with the chords, this is what it sounds like. So if I kind of count over the chords, it's the same thing. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. 
Hopefully that's easy to follow. I am doing both down and up strums. Yeah, I think that's it. So down, up, 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 down, up. I think that's what I'm playing. So that was a really long-winded way to explain the strumming pattern that I'm playing, but hopefully that was easy to follow. So there are a few exceptions to this chord pattern, but overall it's sort of the same chunk of chords in the same order over and over again. So we're going to start off with the C major chord, and then we're going to go to the E minor 7, then to the A minor 7, and then back to the E minor 7, first of all. So it sounds like this. Then the next section, we're going to go to an F, then to the G, then to the A minor 7, then to the G. So the next bit sounds like this. So if you put those two sections together, that gives us the phrase that we're almost using the whole way through the song. So I'll play that for you now. So then you can start putting the words over it and start at the verse. So if you wanted to play the first section, it would go like this. I should never think what's in your heart, what's in our home. So I believe it's the same for the chorus. So if you go into the chorus section. Save your soul. Save your soul. Before you're too far gone. And before nothing can be done. So I believe from the top of my head there are only two variations to this overall chord pattern and that's the last chord that we play in that bunch. So normally, like I showed you, you'll play the F, the G, the A minor 7 and then the G. So I believe it's in the second verse that it changes for the first time. Instead of going to the G as the last chord, you'll go from the A minor 7 to the E minor 7 to sort of extend the chord pattern and it sort of plays that second half of the bunch of chords I showed you. So if I play the second verse I think you'll see what I mean. I try to decide when she lie in the end. I ain't got no fight in me in this whole damn world to tell you to hold on. As you can see, 
it goes from the A minor 7 to the E minor 7 and then it sort of cycles in that second half of the bunch of chords from the F to the G to the A minor 7 to the E minor 7 and sort of repeats that until the chorus comes around again. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll do a full playthrough at the end and then you can play along once you've kind of got the hang of the chords. So then the other time that the chords change is at the very end of the song where we've got the repeat of the line without me you've got it all, so hold on. Um, and that's the same kind of concept, so we're going to go from the F to the G to the A minor 7 to the E minor 7 and we finish on a G I believe. So if I go from after the second chorus, you've got the section that goes like this. Without me you got it all, so hold on. Without me you got it all. Without me you got it all, so hold on. Without me you got it all, so hold on. Without me you've got it all, so hold on. And then it ends on the C. So like I mentioned, ways that you can switch this up is you can do the hammer on in the C shape which sounds really nice. You can add the first finger into the G chord. If I play that a little bit better, you can hear it. Also, sometimes I will lift fingers in chords. So for example, in the A minor seven, I'll do a sort of hammer on with the first finger where I lift it off the second string and then put it back on like this. Like I said, with the E minor 7, you don't have to have the first finger on there. So there's lots of ways you can sort of switch it up and make it sound different. But honestly, the reason that I loved playing this song was because I felt like I could really just play the chords. They sounded beautiful and then I could just sing over the top and enjoy playing it. Yes. Okay. So I think I've found a way that I can play the whole song all the way through and you can still see what I'm playing. It's a little bit of a weird angle, but as I have said, I've covered this song before, so if you want to go see it properly covered, then you can head over to that older video. But I also wanted to include the full playthrough in this tutorial. So hopefully this has been helpful and let's play the whole song. I should never think what's in your heart, what's in our home. So you.
you got it all So hold on Without me you got it all Without me you got it all So hold on Without me you got it all So hold on Without me you've got I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'm not really used to teaching how I play the covers that I do here on YouTube for you, but I know a lot of you who've watched the original cover really wanted to know how to play it. So hopefully this really helped you and that you can start to play it yourself. Like I said, there are lots of ways to switch this one up because it is quite repetitive and hopefully you could also see in the full playthrough that there's a couple of times where you might hold on to one chord for like an extra bar or there might be a little pause or something like that. But honestly, if you look at the way that Robert Pattinson plays, he's very loose with his timing and he is very, I don't know, soulful and heartfelt when he plays his songs. And I know that's probably why a lot of us really love this song. So make it your own and just enjoy playing. Dang it. I know this was a little bit of a different video this week, but I hope this is what you guys wanted to see. And if you have any ideas of other covers you want to see me play, then please comment them down below. Or if you have any questions about this tutorial video, or if you want me to show you how to play any other songs that you've seen me cover, then also comment that down below because I want to make videos that you guys want to see. Um, and yeah, engage with me down below. I also just want to say thank you so much again to all of you who have subscribed. It means a lot to me and it helps me to grow, it helps me to know which videos you like and it's just nice to have a little community and people who want to share the love of music. And if you haven't followed me on my other social media, they're always linked in the bio down below. Uh, I always post on my Instagram, especially on my stories, so if you want to see what I'm up to more on a day-to-day -day basis or want to see the behind the scenes of my songwriting and my new releases or even of me getting ready to film these videos and seeing how I set up and stuff then make sure you follow me over there because I'm always showing you little sneak peeks. So don't forget that I'm uploading new videos every single Tuesday and I will sometimes put up a bonus video on Friday. I think this week's going to be one of those bonus times so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss it and I'll see you in the next song. Bye! You got it all, so hold on. Without me, you got it all.